Hello everybody, welcome to Week in Technology or Week in Tech. Uh, my name is Karamjit and with me is Aisha. Aisha, you have the floor. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, today's uh, next week's cover story, uh, it's it's about KPO, which is Knowledge Process Outsourcing. I mean, that, that uh, acronym has been bandied about for some time now. So uh, uh, it's uh, basically I wrote this story about how uh, there was a survey that came out of uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Okay. And uh, um, it, it basically uh, interviewed, I think, polled about 514 service providers. Service providers, okay. yes, yeah, so, uh, from 50 countries f okay. across, I think, all the continents, I think, and, mm -hmm. and just just their views on what they're going to do. Uh, I interviewed the uh, executive director of Price PwC and also uh, the guy that was responsible for the survey itself, okay. uh, Mr. Charles. Charles. And uh, I think that because I. Um, uh, Carmen made a very important point, and she Carmen said is, that, uh, which uh, is the Malaysian, executive uh, director, exec. yeah, okay. and she said that um, she feels that KPO is definitely a doable model for Malaysia because okay. I think in the SSO space we have a lot of MNCs and mm -hmm. and that, that has brought a lot of FDIs yeah. into Malaysia, but in terms of our local players, you know, we we, we don't really have volume or even mass. No. So she says that if you think about volume, of course, you can't compete with India and China. You know, they have critical mass. Yeah. So, you know, this is why KPO is a very suitable model for Malaysia because with knowledge process outsourcing, you could essentially have just a 20-man outfit okay. that does um, analytics or even financial R&D mm -hmm. for, for research houses or okay. even for banks. And uh, it's a doable model. Mm -hmm. That 20 people is enough, basically. You have 20 brains and that's okay, enough. Yeah. Whereas with BPO, you would need... 600, 2000, yeah, 2,000 yeah. people doing call centers, or, uh, you know, 500 people doing, you know, uh, uh, tax and accounting for, yeah. uh, you know, that are outsourced. So, she says it's definitely an opportunity for Malaysia. Course, yeah. And I think they're also working with MDEC mm -hmm. to, to, I don't know, uh, they, they wouldn't, uh, I, I'm expecting MDEC to make some announcements soon, okay. but they, they are going to sort of, I think MDEC is also working on some, I don't know, incentive or strategy oh, okay. uh, when in it comes area. to KPO, okay. yeah. Yeah, talking about the volume game in, in your SSO, I spoke to the global head of um, outsourcing for an MNC, and he says they, they just uh, couldn't locate in Malaysia because the numbers don't justify. You know, they want to scale up to 5,000, maybe even 10,000. And he says Malaysia just doesn't have you know, mm. that much manpower. That was uh, four years ago, three years ago, 2007. And that really struck me in saying, wow, you know, how small, you know, Malaysia is, you know, to be able to play in this space. So, absolutely, hopefully, KPO is one area that we can utilize, you know, and exploit and create a viable, you know, niche that we become world leading for. Of course, the the areas within KPO that we can play for and that we've covered in Evalu before is obviously oil and gas. We've mm -hmm. got domain expertise there. Yeah, we've expertise got domain there. expertise here. Yeah. We've got numbers also because you don't need huge numbers. Mm -hmm. And of course, even in accounting, right? I mean, it's well known that Malaysian accountants are, are poached all over the Asian region now because we, you know, we're just so comfortable with diversity, you know. So that's an area hopefully we can we can look at, right? I think actually even uh, possibly mm -hmm. um, animation uh, also falls on a KPO. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. For, for houses, you they, think we can they, play they that have space they have. Well, I asked Carmen this, mm -hmm. and she says that. Uh, mm, well, she says that she. I mean, she she reads. You know, reading the papers and okay. the news and looking yes. at the industry. She she says that she feels that our strength are still in oil and gas, yeah. financial services oh, and yeah. stuff. So, uh, on animation, I don't think she's. She she doesn't that's think that there is yeah yeah, yeah that's true yeah, you know because because so it's too. it's probably just something that we started but yes. we don't really have a foothold no, in no, yet no, no, yeah not yet. Stay, leave the animators you know in Malaysia you know, doing work for Malaysian companies mm -hmm. yeah but okay that's one uh, uh, just moving on you just came back from Aisha just came back from Penang so Aisha. <laughs> uh oh yeah it was it's actually a trip organized by Maida because they wanted to show the. Uh, Malaysian yeah, Industrial Development yeah, Authority. Yeah, okay. they wanted to. They I know my acronyms. Brought, uh, brought us up to Penang to, to look at the uh, ENE industry okay. there. It's been there for 30 years. Yeah, it oh started wow. with seven companies, and now I think, uh, I don't know, they've, they've got a lot basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I think uh, the, the, the one thing that struck me was, was, was we, we visited three different companies. One okay. was Siltera, which is a wafer fabrication. Sure. It actually does the actual IC, yeah. which is the chip. Yeah. And then we've got uh, Globetronics, which is a local company that does the component of you mm -hmm. know of one of the IC mm -hmm. and I think they're, they're, uh, the last one was Altera which is an MNC and they are they do design of the chip yeah. so it was it was interesting for me because I got to tour and see you know different companies that play mm -hmm. in the different space of the, the value, chain. value chain yeah, yeah. exactly so that was good but um, 